Altercations have happened over basketball ever since the sport has been created. Dating all the way back to the 1900s, streetball players have been making horrible foul calls on the court, getting pissed off because their ankles got broken in front of females, and or have had someone call them their son after a layup. These events that I have just listed are all grounds for a fight to break out in the basketball court. Whenever trash talkers get involved, streetball basketball can become one of the most hostile sporting environments on the planet. And streetball basketball is one of the only places on earth that I can think of where having a confrontational personality is strongly encouraged. On any given basketball court, there's five levels of toxicity that you can find in the streetball is playing. On the first level, we got the chill dude who's just trying to get his rented. He's not going to say much to the team. He's probably just hooping to get some extra cardio in. He'll overall just be a nice dude. If you fall on the ground, he'd be the person to pick you up. He won't even argue over a soft foul call, even when he knows he didn't foul you. On the second level, we got the nice dude who stands up for himself. This dude's not going to start any unnecessary problems. But if someone tries to say that the ball's out on him, and it's not, he's going to fight back. On the third level, we got the tactical tester. This dude talks trash to everybody he sees solely because he's trying to get into their head. He usually will take jabs at the person's ability to shoot, or he'll just say that they're a terrible player throughout the entire game. His reasoning for talking trash isn't to embarrass the other player or to make him feel bad about himself. It's just because he will go to any measure to win the game. And after the game's over, he'll oftentimes make an extra effort to dap up the person he trash talked and say good game. On the fourth level, we got the menace to society. This dude's entire purpose in life is to completely embarrass whoever is playing against him. Usually a menace couldn't care less about their opponent's feelings on the basketball court and simply wants to absolutely obliterate them. Menaces will break your ankles, throw the ball off your head, and then call you their son all in a 15 second time span. The only catch is menaces have to be insanely raw at basketball in order to back up all the trash they talk. And menaces rarely ever cause actual physical altercations. Lastly, on the fifth level, we have the demon. Demons have zero regard for human life. Demons don't go on the basketball court to play basketball, they just trying to get someone to fight them. Demons will do everything in their power to humiliate their opponent, ranging from talking trash about their hairline to just straight up pushing them. It's extremely rare to find a demon on the basketball court, cause just like menaces, demons have to be good, or they'll just end up getting jumped. This is because, how streetball basketball works, everything that happens on the court has to be settled on the court, meaning that, if someone is disrespecting you and you can't lock them up on defense, you're pretty much screwed. And in order to become a demon though, you have to beat everyone who challenges you, and everyone is coming for your number one spot, so only the strong is truly survive this position. These five levels of toxicity are prevalent throughout the YouTube basketball community right now. And since everybody wants to be a famous streetballer nowadays, people are always coming for everyone else's spot. Everyone wants to be seen as the best, and everyone is constantly getting tested. Only the best are passing every test, and when they do, some of the craziest plays you'll see occur. When two players beef on the basketball court, the rest of the game turns into an all-out battle between the two players. It's one of the most entertaining things you can witness in all of sports. And with these battles, there are people who always come out on top. If you start beef with one of these players, I guarantee it's not going to end well. And you might as well kiss your streetball rep goodbye. Get some popcorn, because this video is going to be fire. This is 8 Streetballers no one wants beef with. But before we get into it, run that intro. Put it on my soul. I don't want no end outs, I'll do it on my own. Trouble as a team, skipping class like they songs. I get down to my last, and I'm running in your own minds. Blowing up my phone, trying to see where I'm at. Alright y'all, before we get into this video, if you like basketball content, make sure you hit that subscribe and like button. We just hit 18,000 subscribers and I really think that we get that 20,000 subscriber mark soon. I've only had this channel for 2 months, so it's crazy how fast we're growing. I'm editing this video on IHOP at 1am right now as we speak, cause all the support on this channel has motivated me insanely. Thank you guys so much, all that engagement really goes a long way. And also follow my Instagram, at DrYT, we're on the road to 1,000 followers on there. We just got the co-sign by both Nick Briz and Devante Friga, so the whole streetball community is watching us now. I love reading your guys' messages. And without further ado, let's get into the video. In this video, I'm going to be stating 8 street brawlers that no one wants beef with. I don't think it's fair for me to make any official ranking for where these people stand in respect to each other, because I'm literally just a dude. I'm not Max Preps, so instead, I'm going to be bringing you guys on a full storyline showcasing what they do, and I'm going to leave it up to you guys in the comment section to decide the rankings. Also quick disclaimer, the storylines I'm about to show you guys in between the games are dramatized and fabricated. Obviously I don't know y'all in real life, I created these storylines off the top of my head in order to be the most entertaining for the video. Please do not take these storylines seriously, however, all clips that you're going to be seeing of the actual people and every single streetball interaction that you see is real. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off, let's get some friends and take a trip to Toronto, Canada. Let's drive about 45 minutes from the airport until we see a massive group of people surrounding a basketball court. We can't see anything, so we have to sit on the fence to get a view of what's going on. Here, in the center of this group, stands a dude named Matt Katipis. He's just finished winning a streetball game and is getting ready for his next matchup. He starts saying something to the crowd, and we quickly realize that he has one of the most randomly deep voices we've ever heard in our entire lives. Big man guarding me. Tough to get some shots up, but regardless, so we got a dog. That's all that matters, you feel me? In the next game, some guy steps up to guard Matt and taunts him by rubbing his head. Rubbing someone's head is pretty much another way of saying that they're your son. So Matt feels disrespected by this, like anyone else would, and immediately wants to embarrass him. He proceeds to do this. Oh. 
He then proceeds to just push the crap out of him, causing a mini court crash. <laughs> After pushing the crap out of this dude, he proceeds to flex on the crowd and get cheers. He then stops tapping his own head with all of his teammates. This gesture is another way of saying that you dunked on someone. The dude he played against never recovers. Fast forward two hours later on that same day, me and you realize that we've been sitting on top of a fence for two hours. We then realize this is kind of embarrassing and we should probably get a girlfriend or something. Just as we're about to leave and go to a party, we look down and see Matt get crossed up. After going like Damn! like everyone else on the court, we proceed to grab our popcorn and anticipate what Matt's gonna do in response. Then, one of the craziest plays I've ever seen happens. Don't call that shit. Nigga, he, my nigga, what are you what taking, bro? Are you what are you fuck? taking? I got it. I, They're not taking the ball. Our whole squad absolutely goes insane and we're screaming at the top of our lungs and getting hyped. We get so hyped that one of our homies ends up passing out. We realize that we have to go back to the United States in order to take him to the hospital. So we rush to the airport and then fly back to America. We end up getting off in Kissimmee, Florida. As we're on the way to the hospital, we drive by a basketball court where we see some tall Snoop Dogg built dude windmilling. After seeing this, our homie somehow gains consciousness and wants to see the rest of this game. We then pull up to the court and gather around. Some random dude on the sidelines informs us that his name is Slim Reaper, which is pretty fitting, and he proceeds to completely go off. After 30 minutes of watching Slim defy gravity, we realize that we should probably go home and finish our homework. But as we're walking away to leave, this happens. Clear, 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 clear. Get that sh the f out of here! So, Gumball's dad from Amazing World of Gumball's long lost cousin starts talking trash to Slim. And then, DJ Ghost's older brother jumps in the mix as well. Things get so heated that somebody brings out literal boxing gloves. What? Yeah, we all that, so it's not. Hey, hold on. Hey, hold on. Us homies on the sideline are so entertained that it feels like we're watching Infinity War for the first time again. We all look towards Slim to see how he responds, and he doesn't disappoint. After getting high points again, one of our other friends gets a call from his real estate agent. He's currently looking to rent an apartment, and we all promised him that we would help him move in. The real estate agent tells him that he's found a below average apartment that's in the middle of the hood selling for $5 million a month. That's when we realize that we're going to California. So we pack all our things and hop on the first flight to LA. We then prepare ourselves to be in debt. Once we touch down in California, we decide we're going to go to In-N-Out before we check out the apartment. On the way to In-N-Out, we notice a dude in a dress shirt on the basketball court. Never thought I'd ever be saying that. Talking trash to someone dressed in all blue. As we look closer, we realize that that someone is the Professor, one of the most famous streetball legends of all time. We all think back to watching the Professor cook defenders in the Spider-Man costume when we were kids. And after we go on a nostalgia run, we immediately say screw that in and out and watch the Professor do his thing. And just like we pictured, the Professor embarrasses the dude entirely.
You good? Shoulder out of place? Shoulder out of place? Done. He, he, he's hurt. He's hurt. You okay, bro? Hey, look, what happened was we started playing three on three. I was shaking up the dude out guard. He said, Hey, all you gotta do is wash his waist. It ain't nothing. So I was like, All right, so you got next. He was like, You're right. I do got next. So, me, my overly competitive attitude, I was like, You got a button up on you. You're not ready to hoop. You look like you're ready to go to work. He said, I'll play you for 100 after this. I said, Let's do it. If I win, uh, you don't have to pay me anything. If you win, I'll give you 100 bucks. Next thing I know, he's on the ground, shoulder out of the socket. That's fine. After the game's over, a different fan tells us that he forgot his wallet back in Canada. We proceed to flame him for being irresponsible. After we flame him, we all buy our tickets and fly back to Canada. Once we touch down in Canada, we run into Drake at the airport. Okay, I'm getting a little unrealistic right now, but just bear with me. <laughs> so as we run into Drake, I ask him if he has a second to talk with us. He responds with, Okay, alright, that's fine. He then tells us that he just co-signed the streetball player named K Showtime, and that he has a big game coming up. This is real, like Drake actually co-signed this dude. He then invites us to come pull up to it. He then walks off with Amari Bailey's mom. We say thank you, and drive over to the court to see K Showtime's game. Once we get to the court, we immediately see some dude chalking trash to K Showtime. We all look at each other, like dang, what is going on here? But before we can even react, this happens. And then throughout the next 30 minutes, we proceed to watch a complete display of humiliation. My son right here. My son. Yes, yeah, son. Money. These plays are so unbelievably humiliating that we can't even look at it anymore. We then sprint to our cars and book it to the airport to flee the country. Once we successfully escape Canada, we land back in LA. Because it's LA, our bank account immediately goes down $50,000 somehow. We're confused as to why we lost all this money, so we proceed to drive over to the bank. As we're on the way to the bank, we see that Matt, the same dude from earlier, is squaring up against YouTuber Kenny Chow. He's talking trash and calling Kenny his son. Whoa, 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 whoa. watch the hand, bro. Because watch I the promise hand. you, you're about to be my son today. Boy, ain't no way. I'm, I'm, I, I ain't nobody's son. We immediately get sidetracked, and so we pull up to the park and expect to see a similar thing happen to what happened in Canada. We expect to see Matt just absolutely destroy Kenny. Well, we couldn't be more wrong. Kenny Chow absolutely goes crazy. Let it go, Rick. That's crazy, bro. You come to my city and leave me wide open. Right here, huh? I'll let that go again. I'll let you get the first spot. Why would you? Why? That's crazy, bro. Oh my god. I let it go again. That's crazy. I'm in such no rhythm, bro. Way. I close my eyes, make these shots, man. Yeah. Let it go, brick. That's crazy. This oh man, bro. I don't know what it is. People in Toronto. So game it. That's crazy. I oh. Know. I didn't even have to dribble. Two. I'm literally cooking you. Two cannot go left. Oh my god! Oh my Dude. god! 
Yeah. You honestly think you're gonna win? Yeah, you, know. you ever seen that kind of shot before? Never. You've never seen that in Toronto, huh? <laughs> Finish it. They never seen that kind of shot in the six, huh? That's crazy. The six don't have these kind of shots, boy. Yeah, get all that! Get all that shit! We then see people all across the world start flaming mad. Kenny was the underdog story and he completely won. That's a tough situation. Fast forward about a week and somehow we find ourselves in Florida again. Bruh. We see one of our old friends from high school on the basketball court in a pink jersey. We remember him being very raw at basketball and expect great things from him. But then, this dude shows up and our friend proceeds to get punked. Throw the bucket ball. Get the bucket ball. We ask the sidelines who the heck this dude is who's punking our high school friend. And some dude responds and informs us that his name is literally the clamp god. We then say, oh no, nah, screw this, this ain't fair. And we drive 45 minutes to another court in Florida. Once we arrive at this court, we see Nick Briz and Devontae Friga, two of the biggest streetball players in the industry, going head to head. Nick Briz wins this battle by hitting the game winning shot. He then goes absolutely wild in celebration. Who am I? Who am I? Game time! Devontae Friga, game time! After the game, he invites us all back to his house where he throws a party. He then smokes on Devontae Friga Pack with Carlos, who's one of his teammates. We getting loose! We smoking on that Friga Pack! While he's smoking with Carlos, Iman, who didn't get to play in this game, doesn't get invited to the party. So instead, he just sits outside of the house and smokes along in his car with a hoodie on without saying a word. Nick then tells us that there's another game happening the next day and he invites us to go. We say, sure, sounds fun. So fast forward the next day and we see some big polar bear looking dude get into it at the basketball court. We then are told that his name is Chris White. We're also told that he eats raw meat for dinner every night. One of our friends gets really scared, and we decide that that should be it for the tour. After calling the tour quits, I then proceed to drop everyone off at their homes. I say goodbye to everyone, and I make sure everyone gets home safely. After I go and drop the homies off, I feel a little bit hungry. I look to my right on the road, and there's an IHOP. I walk inside, and all the servers are very nice. They tell me to just sit down because they can tell I've had a long day. I say thank you, and I walk over to the back of the IHOP. I open the YouTube app on my phone, and I realize that I haven't uploaded for a couple days. I sit to myself and start wondering what my next video should be. As I'm sitting there, I start reflecting on my day and everything I saw. I'm wondering if I can draw on something that I witnessed today for the title of my next video. So I sit there, and I think. And then, it hits me. Eight street ballers no one wants beef with. Yeah, I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm actually in that IHOP right now. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section who you think is the most feared. Matt from Canada, Slim Reaper, The Professor, K Showtime, Kenny Chow, The Clamp God, Nick Briz, or Chris White. I got every single one of their channels on the screen, so make sure you check them out. Also, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I put a lot of time into these videos, so all the support really means a lot. We're on the road to 20,000 subscribers right now, and I've only had this channel for two months. And follow my Instagram, at DocUpYT. Thank you guys for watching. I can't thank you all enough for all the support. Without further ado, I'm out. Peace. Hey, my mama blew a hundred thousand dollars in the eighties. Went back broke by the time that she had a baby. Tried to teach me lessons on how to get money and save it. But I ain't listen. I had to show up in the latest 10th grade. Getting every Jordan release like they was payless. Now I'm grown, so it's foreign cars and diamonds to make them statements.